In this video, I will show you how to make a very basic batch of cold process soap. Please read the notes below before you begin. They include helpful hints as well as safety precautions you must be aware of before making soap. The ingredients and items list is simple. You will need a kitchen scale with a tear function, a long stainless steel spoon, a stainless steel pot, a smaller stainless steel pitcher with a handle, a mold or a plastic container, a mask, gloves, goggles or eye protection, a thermometer, a small glass, essential oils which are optional, olive oil, coconut oil, filtered water, and sodium hydroxide commonly called lye. a stainless steel whisk, a rubber scraper, extra ingredient bowls, and a potholder. Make sure you are wearing long sleeves and closed-toed shoes for your safety. When you measure ingredients, you'll measure them by weight, not volume. To measure, place the empty receptacle on the scale and push the tear button to set the weight to zero. The scale only shows the weight of the ingredient and not the container it is in. Set out your largest stainless steel container. Pour in your olive oil. Add your coconut oil. Put your pot on the stove on the lowest setting. You want the solid oil to melt slowly at a low temperature. Now it's time to mix the lye and the water. You'll need your stainless steel pot and a long stainless steel mixing spoon and put on your goggles, mask, and gloves. Pour the water into the container first, then slowly stir in the lye a little bit at a time. Always add lye to water. Do not add water to lye. This can cause the lye to erupt out of the container and release harmful gases abruptly. Now the container will heat up and the sides will be hot. Don't touch the sides. When the lye has completely dissolved, put it in a safe place to cool down. While we wait for the lye and the oil to cool, we can measure out our additive ingredients. These can be essential oils, herbs, spices, whatever we want to add to give the soap some character. Here, I am adding peppermint essential oil, and I've changed the unit to grams on my scale for a more precise measurement. If we didn't want to include any extra additives, the soap would still turn out just fine. It would just be unscented and a neutral color. Let's talk about molds. This one holds about 2.5 pounds of soap and has a wooden base with a silicone liner. If you don't have something like this, a reusable plastic food container will work just fine. It should be flexible and shallow, and remember never to use it for food again. Let's check on our oil. The coconut oil has melted completely. Measure the temperature of the oil mixture with your thermometer. Both the oil and the lye solution need to be cool to a temperature range between 100 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit, or approximately 38 to 49 degrees Celsius, before they can be mixed together. This is to ensure it incorporates properly and to prevent the soap mixture from overheating but you don't have to be exact. I've had successful batches when the lye is at room temperature, but you don't want the oil to cool too much or the coconut oil will solidify again and it won't mix properly. Now measure the temperature of the lye solution, making sure to put your gloves back on if you've taken them off. The sides of the pitcher might still be hot, so be careful. Always wear gloves when handling lye. Both temperatures were too high. They were well over 120 degrees, so they are too hot to mix. 
You can allow these to cool naturally over time, which will take a few hours. You can also speed the process of cooling the oil in the lye solution by making an ice water bath. Make sure to stir the oil and the lye to ensure that they cool evenly. This is especially important for the oil because the coconut oil can solidify and form a film on the bottom of the pot. This is harder to reincorporate back into the mixture, so stir it consistently and measure the temperature periodically. Now we have both the oil and the lye solution at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's time to mix them. Bring your essential oil and any additives nearby if you're using them for your soap. We will use them in a bit. Now get your steel whisk ready. Slowly add the lye solution to the oil and not the other way around. Pour a bit at a time and stir. This will take some time, but just keep stirring slowly, making sure not to splash. You'll notice the color of the oil is changing. This is called emulsification, and you are witnessing the chemical reaction between the lye and the oil. Keep mixing until all the lye has been stirred in, and now you just have to stir for a while. What we're looking for here is a little sign that the mixture is thickening up a bit. This may take longer if you're in a colder environment, or it could be sooner if it's hot out. It'll just take some time either way. You may feel the urge to mix in the essential oil now, but it's not time yet, and you'll see why. Keep mixing. See how the consistency is still very thin? If you have an immersion blender, you can use this to speed up the mixing process. Notice how fast the color changes now. You want to make sure your soap is being mixed consistently because the mixing process has been significantly sped up. Keep in mind, this immersion blender is now another item that you shouldn't use to prep food anymore after using it for soap. Now the soap is getting thicker. This is a good time to add any herbs, spices, clays, or dry ingredients because they will take time to incorporate evenly. 
The idea is to add it when the mixture is cooler so it doesn't damage or alter your additives. This is bentonite clay. I'm adding a little at a time. Consult a recipe for exact amounts because I'm just eyeballing it here to show you how to add a powder like this. This will take a few minutes of mixing to get rid of any lumps. A good way to incorporate this evenly is to mix the clay in a separate little container with about a cup of soap mixture. Then add this back to the main mixture when it's evenly mixed. The goal here is to mix the solution until it comes to a trace. You'll know it has reached a trace when it becomes thick like cake batter. A line of the soap will sit on the surface, and this is what a medium trace looks like. If you mix it longer, the trace will become even thicker and less fluid. Now it's time to add the essential oil. Use the whisk again to ensure it's mixed evenly. If you use the immersion blender, you risk over mixing and not incorporating the essential oil evenly into the mixture. Now it's ready to pour into the mold. Again, you can use an alternative mold if you don't have something like this. Use the rubber scraper to make sure all of the soap gets into the mold. This batch is pretty thin. If you stir longer, it'll be thicker and then you can sculpt the top of the soap with decorative patterns and peaks to add some aesthetic value. Lightly tap the mold on the countertop to encourage any bubbles to the surface. If your mold doesn't have a lid, find something else to use to cover it. Put a couple pieces of fabric over the top to protect the blanket that you'll use to insulate the soap. Now tuck it in and say goodnight. Leave the soap to rest for a full 24 hours. This is allowing it enough time to insulate and fully saponify. After 24 hours has passed, check your soap. If it's soft to the touch, let it sit another 24 hours. If it's solid and pulls away from the silicone, you can remove it from the mold.
Next, you'll want to cut the soap up to allow it to dry faster. You can also leave it in a loaf shape and cut off soap as you need it. This recipe I used today made a pretty soft soap. It's easier to cut, but will take more time to cure. You can cut it up however you'd like. You can use a straight edge to bevel the edges or leave them raw looking. It's good to check in the middle of the loaf to make sure it's saponified correctly. If the color and shade is consistent, it's saponified evenly. You can make some guide marks to help you gauge how big to cut the pieces. If you try to use the soap within 48 hours of taking it out of the mold, it could be too irritating on the skin. Let your soap cure for three to six weeks in a cool, dry place before using. This allows extra water to evaporate out of the soap and the bar will become firm enough to use. This batch is particularly soft, so it'll take about four to six weeks to fully cure and harden. The longer you wait, the harder the bar, and the harder the bar, the longer it lasts. So now you have everything you need to begin your new hobby of soap making. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please leave any questions or comments in the comment section below or email me at beanblossomsoaps at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.